Now I don't want it to look like my apple's just floating around in space. So what I'm gonna do is I've blended the shadows on there. I'm blending this a little bit more. This part bothers me because I think it needs to fade in more. Um, but I noticed that the apple itself has a contact shadow underneath it and a cast shadow. I'm actually gonna get something I can point with a little bit better. So you guys can see it's very dark down there where the apple touches the actual table. If I lift it up, that shadow turns a lot lighter, but the lower it gets to the table, the closer, it actually squishes the light and kills it. So it's very dark underneath where it contacts it. That's why it's called a contact shadow. The cast shadow is the round one that we see around it. So I'm gonna go in and make sure that contact shadow is very dark. So I'm putting that on there with the charcoal. You could be using your color pencil or your crayon. Then I'm going to pull out from under it. So as I come out from under it, that shadow should be getting lighter. And I know it's a round shadow, but I'm not gonna draw a circle and color it in. That's something a little kid could do. A little kid can't do all this hard work that we're doing. Then I'm gonna pull out from underneath it. Here, it looks almost like painted. It has a very painterly effect. This looks very scribbly. It looks like the way a little kid would use a crayon. But if you're going back over it and blending it, like we're talking about, then you want it to have that painted on effect. Your strokes will not look like a little kid, even if you're using the crayon. So I'm gonna pull out from underneath it. And as I do that, if I traced a line around the shadow, I would have a round shape. Sort of leaning and looking through the camera to make sure I see what you guys are seeing. So probably, oh, the camera moved. Don't want that to keep happening. So probably you guys are seeing the shadow that goes around the back there. So I need to make sure that I put a little charcoal on there and then I can use my finger or my blending tool, trying not to rest my hand on my drawing too much to bring that around to the back because I actually see it does go around to the back. So now I have my shadows that are on the apple and I have my shadows that are actually sitting around the apple down there on the actual table. So I'm gonna let you guys work on that and then we're gonna move into putting the light on the apple.